attention to the speech given on the 12th by the honorable prime minister who referring to atmanirbhar bharat had spoken about supply chain reforms and uh, how technology driven system should work and also how uh, the demography will uh, have to benefit from it so deriving from all this um, today the focusing on agriculture and allied activities agriculture fisheries dairy animal husbandry and uh, allied activities so which will also have some um, uh, aspects of food processing and so on see the largest proportion of indian population is dependent on agriculture even now and of all those who are dependent on agriculture nearly 85% of the operational holdings are held by small and medium sized farmers small and actually marginal farmers that is also referred to in the economic survey of 2020 however it always goes to the credit of the indian farmers who against all adversities be it of the monsoon or sometimes unwanted drought or you know some uh, crop uh, pestilence in spite of all that indian farmer has always stood up to the challenge endured a lot and re made india reach certain global benchmarks very quickly i'll tell you you are aware that india is the largest milk producer largest jute producer largest pulses producer dals variety of dals it's also the second largest in global numbers second largest in the production of sugarcane in the production of cotton groundnut fruits vegetables and also in fisheries india is also third globally placed in the production of cereals so really indian farmers have really endured but made sure that his holdings may be small but he would give us the highest yield so today we want to show you some of the slides also very quickly without spending much time i'll tell you what kind of support systems that we had established during the lockdown period so that as you are aware keeping all the respects for social distancing and also ensuring all kinds of uh, you know uh, preventive measures are taken during the lockdown it goes to the credit of our workers in the fields our farmers the peasants and the marginal uh, farm land holders that they con concluded almost concluded the rabi crop harvest and also many of the states have been successful in somehow pushing ahead with due uh, due procurement process the crops have been largely procured in the wheat and the rice growing areas the process is ongoing but it goes to the credit of our rural population so today therefore um, i'll also be showing you a slide a bit later on what we have done in the last two months to make sure that agriculture work was supported during the lockdown just the two month story but otherwise post that i like to highlight what are we announcing today for supporting uh, agriculture and allied activities i'll be announcing 11 measures 11 measures and from among them eight of them relate to strengthening infrastructures strengthening capacities building better logistics and so on so eight of them eight of the 11 relate to such things where government allocates money activities will be undertaken uh, undertaken in such a way that very quickly we can ramp up on storage capacities logistics and so on the rest three today of the 11 will pertain to governance and administrative reforms so uh, that's the picture i like to put before you but before we go to the slides in hindi namaskar <coughs> namaskar आत्मनिर्भर भारत अभियान में माननीय प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी ने 20 लाख करोड़ का जो पैकेज दिया है उसके ही आज तीसरे दिन की मीडिया ब्रीफिंग में हम आपके सामने उपस्थित हैं 
और आज कृषि के ऊपर ज़्यादा बात करेंगे कृषि अगर किसान केंद्रित नहीं होगी किसान कल्याण के लिए नहीं होगी तो मुझे लगता है अधूरा रह जाता है शायद यही कारण है कि प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी ने इसका नाम भी कृषि किसान कल्याण मंत्रालय जैसा रखा था तो किसानों के कल्याण के लिए लगातार पिछले पाँच छः वर्षों में कदम उठाए गए चाहे वो पीएम किसान योजना है कि साल में छः हज़ार रुपया किसानों के खाते में सीधा जाएगा करोड़ों किसानों का आज सीधा उसका लाभ मिलता है प्रधानमंत्री फसल बीमा योजना बाढ़ सूखे के समय उनको भरपाई होना सॉयल हेल्थ कार्ड बनाकर उनकी ज़मीन के बारे में बताना ये बहुत सारे कदम पूर्व में उठाए गए और पिछले कल भी जब हमने प्रवासी मजदूर उनकी समस्याओं को लेकर बहुत सारे मोदी सरकार की ओर से उनके लिए कदम उठाए तो उसमें दो बातें हमने फार्मर्स के लिए भी किसानों के लिए भी कही थी और उसमें तीस हज़ार करोड़ रुपये की जो अतिरिक्त इमरजेंसी वर्किंग कैपिटल कार्यशील पूंजी की हमने बात कही ये नब्बे हज़ार करोड़ के अलावा थी जो किसानों के लिए नबार्ड के माध्यम से लगभग तीन करोड़ परिवारों को इसका लाभ मिलेगा और दो लाख क्रेडिट कार्ड बनाकर उनको लगभग ढाई दो लाख करोड़ का जो हमने लाभ देना था ढाई करोड़ किसानों को उसकी विशेष मुहिम चलाई जाएगी ये पिछले कल हम आपने आपके सामने रखा था आज कुछ और कदम उस दिशा में हम उठाने वाले हैं जिसके ग्यारह बिंदु होंगे उसकी जानकारी अब हम आपको देंगे अबाउट येस्टेज अनाउंसमेंट आई थिंक द स्लाइड इज गॉट इनफ टू गिव यू आई एल स्ट्रेट गो ओवर टू कवरिंग टूडेज अनाउंसमेंट्स but uh, linkage with the two steps that i had announced yesterday for the agriculture for the farmers welfare for the additional emergency working capital requirements through nabard which we would be infusing and also to make sure that 2 lakh crore credit will be available under the kisan credit card those were particular references to yesterday now we move over to today's um, where we are coming up with oh yes sorry before i go to that uh in the last two months very quickly a number of measures have been taken to support farmers uh particularly additional steps that we had taken where the minimum support price purchases to an extent of 74300 crores had taken place during the lockdown 74300 crores of purchases based on minimum support price happened during the lockdown and also 18700 crores have been transferred to the accounts of farmers directly into their accounts uh, under the scheme pm kisan samman and that is only during the two months um, and then fasal bima yojana claim payments have been cleared to the extent of 6400 crores in the last two months bima yojana claims when a farmer wants to utilize and ask for the claim so that the, he gets the insurance money in his name such claims totaling 6400 crores have been cleared in the last two months we now move to uh, the steps that i want to announce today oh, oh there's an additional steps uh, also uh, for the animal husbandry which is worth recalling sorry about this it's absolutely important to know that during the lockdown all of you all would have been reporting also media that milk was being produced and the usual restaurants and the hotels and the consumers were all under lockdown so a lot of dairy industry people were put to severe difficulties the milk was being thrown on streets saying our consumers are all locked down they can't buy it from us so during that period 560 lakh per day of liters of milk 560 lakh liters of milk were procured by cooperatives against the daily sale of 360 uh, lakh liters uh, which is produced per day now those were uh, also utilized uh for a further amount of 100 a further 111 crore liters have also been extra procured over and above the usual quantities which come to the market 4100 uh, 100 crores 
have been paid on that account. So money goes to the hands of the milk producing farmers or dairy keepers. A new scheme also was utilized for interest subvention of about 2% per annum for dairy cooperatives. Additionally, 2% per annum of interest subvention also was pro provided to incentivize uh, prompt payment, repayment, and interest servicing. So, and this scheme is further to be continued, and this is expected to unlock 5,000 crores of additional liquidity, benefiting two crore farmers. So this is something which was triggered during the lockdown so that farmers get the money in their hands. This is the impact which I'd like to draw your attention to. Big order. Can you finish that? COVID-19 के दौरान पिछले दो महीनों में बहुत सारे कदम किसानों के हित में उठाए गए और न्यूनतम समर्थन मूल्य देने के लिए लगभग 74,300 करोड़ रुपया खर्च किया गया जो सीधा किसानों को गया है उनकी खरीद करने के लिए उत्पाद की और इसके अलावा जो पीएम किसान योजना है उसके अंतर्गत 18,700 करोड़ रुपया पिछले दो महीनों में क वो 6,400 करोड़ रुपए के क्लेम किसानों को मिले हैं और यही नहीं पशुपालन एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण हिस्सा है किसान की जिंदगी का एक अतिरिक्त आय का साधन बनने के लिए लेकिन दूध की खपत कम हुई और कुल 360 लाख लीटर दूध जो प्रतिदिन पहले वो खरीदते थे उसकी बजाय 560 लाख लीटर प्रतिदिन उ additional liquidity की जो मदद है वो दो करोड़ किसानों को इस योजना के माध्यम से की गई और कुल मिलाकर दो प्रतिशत जो है वो ब्याज अनुदान उनको दिया गया और जिन्होंने जल्द पेमेंट की प्रॉम्प्ट पेमेंट की है या इंटरेस्ट सर्विस समय पर किया है उनको अतिरिक्त अतिरिक्त ब्याज अनुदान दो प्रतिशत और दिया गया है तो कुल मिलाकर दो करोड़ किसानों को 5000 करोड़ रुपए का लाभ इसमें हुआ उनको भुगतान हुआ है और कुल मिलाकर 111 करोड़ लीटर एक्स्ट्रा प्रक्योरमेंट इसमें हुई जो लगभग 4100 करोड़ रुपए की है। One again for the last two months, just to give you reassurance that some of the dates which we had extended for fisheries related activities, because many of them had overseas contracts in getting the brood stock or in getting some of the consignments which were coming from abroad. All the deadline extensions have been honoured. The validity for SIP, sanitary import permits for import of shrimp brood stock, was extended by three months. We have also condoned the delay of one month in the arrival of brood stock consignments. And for all the quarantine cubicles which were booked, but because of the delays, they were going to have to forfeit the monies that they paid. We allowed rebooking at no extra or additional charge. All this has been respected and also the verification of the documents for grant of NOC for quarantining uh, has also been relaxed for, from seven days to three days. So very many measures which will help shrimp farmers, uh, marine farmers and also coastal farmers which were given the kind of extension because of the lockdown have all been uh, extended duly and help and assistance have been extended as promised. So I want to underline the fact that registration of 242 registered shrimp hatcheries uh, and also rearing hatcheries uh, were expiring on 31st March. They have been extended by another three months without any additional burden on them. So such operations also of the marine capture fisheries and aquaculture have also been relaxed to cover inland fisheries and hatcheries. पिछले दो महीनों में 242 नई श्रिम्प हैचरीज को रजिस्ट्रेशन दी गई और जो रेयरिंग हैचरीज जिनकी एक्सपायरी 31 मार्च को हो रही थी उसको तीन महीने की एक्सटेंशन दे दी गई है और बाकी ऑपरेशंस भी मरीन कैप्चरिंग के लिए जो थे उनको और एक्वाकल्चर के लिए जो रिलैक्सेशन देनी थी वो भी दी गई और जो चार घोषणाएँ हमने इनको लेकर पहले की थी उनको भी लागू कर दिया गया है मत्स्य पालन को लेकर आई गो टू टूडे अनाउंसमेंट्स the third tranche covering agriculture. First, four, uh, first uh, eight steps are towards monies going for infrastructure capacity building. 
and from among the eight, so the first one is we provide one lakh crore for aggregators, FPOs, primary agriculture cooperative societies, farmer producer organizations which I mentioned, FPOs, all for strengthening the farm gate infrastructure. Farm gate infrastructure are cold chains, post harvest management infrastructure, storage centers, yards from where they have to do it. So this fund for 1 lakh crore is being created. Here private entrepreneurs, agricultural entrepreneurs, startups, all of whom are now looking at facilitating by procuring from the farmers and reaching out with value addition to the global markets don't have the infrastructure. So this fund for 1 lakh crore will immediately address that issue and that fund will be created at the earliest. Our farmers, the rain, 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 लेकिन उसके साथ साथ एक्सपोर्ट करने में मदद करता है लेकिन भंडारण की कमियां होने के कारण कई बार और मूल्य संवर्धन के अवसर ना होने के कारण कमी रह जाती थी उस कमी को पूरा करने के लिए एक लाख करोड़ रुपए का कृषि आधारभूत ढांचा बनाने के लिए ये योजना लाई गई है जिसमें चाहे कोल्ड चेन हो या फसल कटाई के बाद प्रबंधन करने के लिए जो भी सुविधाएं वैल्यू चेन के लिए बनानी हो उसमें बनाई जाएंगी और इससे लाभ मिलेगा मूल्य संवर्धन के लिए भी भंडारण की क्षमता बढ़ाने के लिए भी और कुल मिलाकर किसान की आय को भी इसमें बढ़ोतरी मिलेगी और भारत न केवल अपनी मांग को पूरी कर पाएगा एक्सपोर्ट करने में भी इसकी आने वाले समय में बहुत मदद मिलेगी और ये जो है इसका जो लाभ होगा वो प्राइमरी एग्रीकल्चर कोऑपरेटिव सोसाइटीज़ हों फार्मर प्रोड्यूस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हो जो किसान उत्पादक संघ हैं या कृषि उद्यमी हो, स्टार्टअप्स हो, एग्रीगेटर्स हो जो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर कृषि के क्षेत्र में लाते हैं, ये सब इनके माध्यम से आधारभूत ढांचा कृषि के क्षेत्र में उनके फार्म गेट पर खड़ा किया जाएगा ताकि इन सुविधाओं का लाभ मिल सके और इस फंड को जल्दी क्रिएट करके शुरुआत की जाएगी। The next of the eight steps towards uh, capacity building, logistics and so on is for food enterprises who are micro in size, we shall be providing a fund of 10,000 crores. It's a scheme which uh, will get executed with a cluster-based approach. I recall Prime Minister Modi when he spoke on the 12th of May, speaking about be vocal for local. This is one of the ways in which the local capacities, the local value-added product can have a global outreach, can reach out for global markets and build brands. They can create products of global standards and therefore marketing them globally will also be assisted through this fund. Most of the products that we are aiming to deal with in this scheme will be related to health and wellness products, nutritional products, herbal products, organic products, and products which are now being used as alternatives for a healthy living. So this we expect will benefit 2 lakh MFEs, micro food enterprises. 2 lakh of them will uh, benefit by bringing them up to that level, modernizing their uh, production techniques, giving them capacities, branding their produce, and so on. But because it's going to be cluster-based, I would want to broadly give you a picture of what we are aiming at. Let us say if it is Bihar, Makana is considered to be one of the very nutritious food without any calorie concerns. One can always use it as a snack. And therefore, in Bihar, the cluster would aim at Makana cluster. Kashmir would aim at Kesar saffron cluster. Karnataka can have ragi and coarse grains, which is today considered to be the most healthiest alternative to for gluten-rich wheat and uh, rice. So the Northeast will have bamboo shoots and organic uh, fruits. Telangana can have 
turmeric. We are only suggesting this because turmeric latte is a big thing outside. Milk made out of uh, whipping uh, cream and uh, turmeric. So turmeric is rich in this country. There can be clusters formed. And Andhra can do chilies. Tamil Nadu can do uh, tapioca, sago and whole lot of other things. I'm just giving examples. So the cluster based is going to focus on those organic and herbal materials or nutritional and health conscious wellness related food items in which India has a great strength. So this particular micro fund enterprises which will have 10,000 crores given by the government will aim at branding and promoting such clusters. The focus will be on women, focus will be on S and SE and STs, focus also where possible will be on aspirational districts ourselves and have a livelihood for themselves rather than go only on entitlements. Where entitlements are due, yes, they will be given. But largely, our focus is making sure India stands up on its own, India is able to be helped to stand up on its own, in turn generate more jobs and so on. So you find a lot more giving of empowering people through create, creation of skills, creation of logistics and so on. पिछले कल जब हमने ढाई करोड़ किसानों के लिए किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड के माध्यम से दो लाख करोड़ रुपया देने की बात कही थी तो उसमें मछुआरे और पशुपालकों की बात भी कही थी उसी दिशा में एक आज एक और बड़ा कदम है प्रधानमंत्री मत्स्य संपदा योजना इसके माध्यम से इसके लिए हमने बीस हज़ार करोड़ रुपये का ये योजना लेकर आए हैं और इसमें जो कमियां थी पूरी वैल्यू चेन में उसको पूरा करने का एक प्रयास है ताकि हमारे मछुआरे भाई बहन इनको समुद्री और अंतर्देशीय मत्स्य पालन में इनका सम्मिलित विकास हो सके और उसको बल मिले ग्यारह हज़ार करोड़ रुपया इसके लिए समुद्री और अंतर्देशीय मत्स्य पालन के लिए एक्वाकल्चर की गतिविधियों के लिए मिलेगा और नौ करोड़ रुपया इसके आधारभूत ढांचे के विकास के लिए चाहे वो फिशिंग हार्बर हो कोल्ड चेन हो मार्केटिंग की सुविधा हो मंडियों की बात हो इस सब के लिए उनको 9000 करोड़ रुपये का प्रावधान किया जाएगा और इससे हमारी जो फिश प्रोडक्शन है मछली का उत्पादन है वो भी अतिरिक्त जो होगा अतिरिक्त मछली उत्पादन जो होगा वो 70 लाख टन अगले पाँच वर्षों में होगा पचपन लाख लोगों को इससे रोजगार मिल पाएगा और एक लाख करोड़ रुपये का एक्सपोर्ट होगा जो लगभग दुगना हो जाएगा तो आप कल्पना कीजिए कि आने वाले वर्षों में कितना लाभ रोजगार और एक्सपोर्ट यानी कि निर्यात के लिए भी इस योजना के माध्यम से मिलेगा वी मूव नेक्स्ट टू दी फोर्थ आइटम ऑफ द एट विच आई प्रपोज टू पुट बिफोर यू दिस इज वेरी मच जस्ट टू रेफर टू वॉट फ्रॉम जनवरी ट्वेंटी Pradhan Mantri ji has been looking at the foot and mouth disease of animals. Our, many of our animals, because they have not been uh, uh, vaccinated, suffered from this foot and mouth disease, as a result of which many of our milk, milk-related producers or dairy or even uh, um, animals which get infected could not, be coming, uh, could not be coming over to the markets. So farmers or animal keepers had a lot of uh, suffering. So, in order that we ensure a 100% vaccination of all cattle, all buffalo, all sheep, all goat and pig population, uh, nearly 53 crore animals. India is one of the largest uh, livestock bearing country. And therefore, for a country of that size with the, one of the largest uh, stock of animal uh, uh, with us, FMD has to be eradicated. Therefore, uh, till date, beginning January, in spite of uh, the lockdown uh, difficulties, 1.5 crore cows and buffaloes have been tagged and they have been vaccinated. So traceability can be established. Why am I saying this? This had a commitment of 13, over 13,000 crores from January of this month, uh, this year. That amount is also flowing and now post the lockdown, in the green zones, at least, this work shall continue with great speed. This forms the basis for my next slide. 
which pertains to animal husbandry and the money which is being allowed for that uh, building of capacities in animal husbandry. देखा जाए तो दुनिया भर में भारत में सबसे ज़्यादा पशुधन वाले देशों में से एक हैं हम और गाय हो भैंस हो भेड़ बकरी सुअर हो ऐसे तिरपन करोड़ जो पशुओं का जो एनिमल्स की बात करते हैं उनके लिए टीकाकरण करने की योजना हम लेकर आए हैं जिसके ऊपर लगभग तेरह हज़ार तीन सौ तरतालीस करोड़ रुपया खर्च होगा और जो आम भाषा में कहा जाता है कि मुंह पका खुर पका रोग मुक्त हम इनको करेंगे मुंह पका खुर पका ऐसे तिरपन करोड़ पशुओं को इससे निजात मिलेगी ऐसे तिरपन करोड़ पशुओं को इससे निजात मिलेगी तेरह हजार तीन सौ तैतालीस करोड़ रुपया इसके ऊपर खर्च होगा ये फुट एंड माउथ डिसीज से हमको मुक्ति मिलेगी इससे हमारे प्रोडक्ट्स की अंतर्राष्ट्रीय स्तर पर भी और मांग बढ़ेगी और स्वीकारता बढ़ेगी और इससे हमारे दूध उत्पादन में उसमें भी बढ़ोतरी होगी और पशुओं को भी एक अच्छा जीवन जीने का अवसर मिलेगा एंड इफ वी क्रिएटेड सच हेल्दी वैक्सीनेटेड एनिमल्स हु स्ट्रेसिबिलिटी इज हाई एंड वी एनश्योर दैट द ग्राउंड इज वेरी वेल लेड एनिमल हजबेंड्री पर्टिकुलरली ड्रेरी सेक्टर कैन नाउ रियली टेक द एडवांटेज ऑफ फोक 15,000 crores will be spent for dairy infrastructure. This will help, and we also hope that many private investments can also come into this area because it has great potential for export, great potential within India for the market. Various items, whether it is milk or powdered milk or butter, ghee, or even any cheese varieties which we need for domestic or for international consumption. are all uh, possible so we aim to support private investment also in dairy processing value addition and also for cattle feed infrastructure cattle feed is a potential area not just for india export of cattle feed also has a lot of scope and therefore animal husbandry infrastructure development fund of 15000 crores is being established and that can work as a, you know as, as an incentive Uh, we can also give incentives for establishing of plants uh, industrial plants for export of niche products like the way i said cheese or processed milk or milk powder or cream such units will have to be established which are scientifically done and standards can be established so we government of india will also give incentives for such plants which will get established in india where you have healthy animals vaccinated animals good milk being available so dairy industry pashu palan mein bhi desh ke kisan piche nahi rahe lekin adharbu dhancha wahan par bhi sudhre aur isiliye pashu palan sector mein buniyadi dhancha ke liye ye vikas fund banaya gaya hai jisko animal husbandry infrastructure development fund kaha gaya 15000 crore rupaye ka pravdhan isme kiya gaya hai ताकि जो दूध उत्पादन होता है उसकी प्रोसेसिंग करने के लिए इंडस्ट्री लग सके मूल्य संवर्धन उसमें हो सके वैल्यू एडिशन हो सके और जो पशु चारे के लिए प्लांट्स हैं कैटल फीड प्लांट्स हैं वो भी बन सके उसका इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर भी खड़ा हो सके ना केवल अपनी आपूर्ति के लिए स्थानीय मार्केट के लिए बल्कि एक्सपोर्ट करने के लिए भी इसमें बहुत अवसर मिलेंगे इसके लिए पंद्रह करोड़ रुपये का फंड ये पशुपालन सेक्टर के बुनियादी ढांचे के लिए दिया गया है I move from here to the uh, sixth point of the eight promotion of herbal cultivation there is a national medicinal plants board 4000 crores of rupees is getting allocated for this purpose this board has already supported 2.25 lakh hectares of area under cultivation for medicinal plants we think a uh, greater Uh, 10 lakh up to 10 lakh hectares will also be brought in for herbal cultivation in the next 2 years with an uh, additional outlay of uh, with an outlay of 4000 crore which is what i'm announcing now and this will help generate at least 5000 crores of income for those farmers who are engaged in this cultivation additional extents are also being expected to brought in be brought in but more importantly 
we again refer to a, a speech by the honorable prime minister where he had said on either both the banks on both the banks of the river ganga they can be herbal and uh, medicinal plants grown so that it can be benefit the local farmers and these medicinal medicinal and herbal plants are now in great demand globally also so this board will undertake about 800 hectares of area which will form a corridor along both the sides of river ganga for growing of herbal and medicinal plants हर्बल कल्टिवेशन की प्रमोशन के लिए लगभग 4000 करोड़ रुपये का प्रावधान इस प्रोजेक्ट के माध्यम से किया जाएगा और 10 लाख हेक्टेयर में इसकी खेती हो पाएगी इसकी कल्टिवेशन होगी 10 लाख हेक्टेयर लगभग 25 लाख एकड़ के बराबर है और इससे 5000 करोड़ रुपये की आय किसानों की होगी और यही नहीं जन औषधि का बहुत महत्व भी है और कहीं ना कहीं मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स ने इस कोविड 19 के समय में दिखाया है कि कैसे हमारे ट्रेडिशनल ये मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स आज भी बहुत काम सबके आए हैं तो इसमें और जितनी आगे बढ़ने का अवसर मिलेगा उसका लाभ होगा रीजनल मंडीज भी इसके लिए उसका नेटवर्क तैयार किया जाएगा और गंगा के किनारे भी ऐसे हजारों एकड़ में इसको प्लांटेशन की ड्राइव भी चलाई जाएगी आई मूव टू द सेवेंथ ऑफ द एट आइटम्स विच आई वॉन्ट टू स्पीक अबाउट टूडे दिस इज अ स्मॉल मैटर बट ऑफ ग्रेट एको सिग्निफिकेंस एंड इट्स गोइंग टू हेल्प इन एग्रीकल्चर इन द फ्यूचर ऑल्सो एज इट इज इन द वेस्टर्न वर्ल्ड वी हियर अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल स्पीक हाउ the disappearing population of the bee the honey bee has led to crops now suffering for want of pollination agents so cross pollination through which happens through bees don't happen that uh, that much like before as a result bee keeping is an initiative which is recognized globally it is an amount but it has it is not a very big amount when you're comparing several lakhs of crores but it is an amount which is important that can be at a level of absorption capacity also 500 crores for beekeeping initiatives which will benefit 2 lakh beekeepers in the rural areas and who can then produce ghee also importantly i'd like to draw your attention in india today wax for all purposes edible medicinal purposes are being imported even that import of wax can be stopped it may not be a big item like crude oil but it is certainly important that the country will have to have its uh, pollination agents as much as give jobs for the rural women and uh, be keepers of uh, both the genders but also look at the way in which imports increase even uh, due to wax it's a small reference that i'm making but it is an initiative which will have uh, a ripple effect on the rural economy and therefore government will implement a scheme for this which will include marketing which will include value addition which will include post harvest facilities for the bee keepers madhumakhi palan ko badhava dene ke liye 500 crore rupaye ki yojana lekar aaye hain aur iske madhyam se 2 lakh se zyada madhumakhi palakon ko unki aay mein vriddhi hogi aur upbhoktaon ko behtar शहद भी मिलेगा और यही नहीं इसके माध्यम से ग्रामीण क्षेत्र के लिए कृषि आधारित जो मधुमक्खी पालन ये उनका आय का एक अतिरिक्त साधन भी होगा जो हमारे किसान हैं उनके लिए भी एक अवसर है लोकल से ग्लोबल उस दिशा में भी इसका एक बहुत बड़ा कदम हो सकता है कि ना केवल लोकल मार्केट के लिए इसको निर्यात के लिए भी एक बड़े अवसर के रूप में देखा जा सकता है i move to the next the last in this uh, list of eight um from top to total is what i want to refer to this also is an existing scheme which gets additional 500 crores
chains have been disrupted for the farmers, particularly during the lockdown. Operation Greens is a scheme which is running at the moment. Operation Greens is a scheme which is running at the moment to take care of tomatoes, onions, and potatoes which are being cult cultivated, which come to feed the cities, and uh, they have had very uh, serious implication because they are perishable and they had to have distress sales. So farm level uh, support needs to be given, otherwise uh, such uh, distress cannot be prevented. So the scheme features are such that they get 50% subsidy on transportation, they get also 50% subsidy for storage. This is a pilot which we extend for the next six months. It will be expanded and also be extended once the pilot phase is cleared. But this is something which has uh, been given an accent now post the lockdown because during the lockdown vegetables were perishing, cities were wanting to have it, logistics affected, so there was a break in this value chain. Top to total yojana mein 500 crore rupee ka pravdhan kiya gaya hai. Ye pehle agar dekha jaye to tomato, onion aur potatoes ke liye di jati thi ki aapke liye tomato, piyaz, aloo in ke liye प्रावधान था लेकिन अब इसको बाकी सब के लिए भी संकट की घड़ी में जब कोविड 19 के समय इसको 6 महीने के लिए एक पायलट के रूप में देखा जाएगा और इसकी सफलता को देखकर इसको आगे और बढ़ाया जा सकता है यही नहीं इससे बल यह मिलेगा कि जो खाद्य पदार्थ नष्ट हो जाते थे खरीदे नहीं जाते थे या किसान को दबाव में आकर कम मूल्य पर बेचने पड़ते थे तो उसकी कमाई भी उससे कम होती थी और नुकसान भी होता था अब इससे किसान को लाभ मिलेगा और ना केवल इसको टमाटर प्याज और आलू तक सीमित रखा गया है बाकियों को भी इसको बाकी फल और सब्जियों को भी इसके अंतर्गत लाया गया है इसमें 50 प्रतिशत सब्सिडी जो है वो माल भाड़े पर यानी कि ट्रांसपोर्टेशन पर दी जाएगी और पचास सब्सिडी जो है वो स्टोरेज अगर भंडारण करना होगा तो उसके लिए इंक्लूडिंग कोल स्टोरेज यानी कि कोल स्टोरेज में भी रखना होगा तो उसके लिए भी पचास परसेंट सब्सिडी इसमें दी जाएगी ताकि वो अच्छे दाम पर समय आने पर बेच सके आई मूव ओवर टू स्पीकिंग अबाउट द गवर्नेंस एंड एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन देर आर थ्री ऑफ देम एंड आई गो टू फर्स्ट वन विच रिलेट्स टू एसेंशियल कमोडिटीज एक्ट द एसेंशियल कमोडिटीज एक्ट इज एन एक्ट विच एग्जिस्ट फ्रॉम नाइनटीन This is an act which is very important, especially when it was uh, promulgated during those days where food shortages were common. Indian farmers were trying to produce but not adequately because uh, of the uh, agricultural uh, impetus which was needed was just then being uh, beginning to be given. But however, when in 1955 it was passed and subsequently also we had lived in days of shortages. Now what is happening is farmers are producing, there is abundance of crop. This abundance of crop sometimes also leads to issues because they would want to export. We don't permit them to export because we want to be sure that India prices don't go up. And because of a flip-flop sometimes farmers don't get the benefit, some other times the consumers suffer. So this Essential Commodities Act requires an amendment. And that amendment will largely be towards making sure that cereals, edible oils, oil seeds, pulses, onions and potatoes will be completely deregulated. And therefore, unless there's an extraordinary situation, there will not be a requirement to invoke this Essential Commodities Act. Stock limits to be imposed uh, will be imposed only under exceptional circumstances such as national calamities or famine or if there is a, a huge surge in prices. Otherwise, there is no need for invoking it. So to that extent, limited to that extent, we would like to amend the Essential Commodities Act. No such stock limit shall apply for processors because today value addition happens at the doorstep of the food processors. Suppose he's kept stocks and if the Essential Commodities Act comes into force, even his premises are raided and whole lot of uh, explanation is asked for. Even for food processing industry, it becomes a problem. 
So no stock limit shall apply to processors or value chain participants or subject to the installed capacity. If they keep a certain quantity, that should be all right. Beyond the capacity is a different issue. So any exporter also will be given that facility so that export demand is not affected. Farmers' prices can be uh, not affected due to uncertainty created by this. So there will be an amendment to the Essential Commodities Act. The first of the three reforms. Krishi Kshetra mein pratis prada badhane ke liye aur nivesh badhane ke liye taaki kisaan ko aur jyada dam achche mil sake iske liye us kanun mein badlaav laya ja raha hai jo 1955 se hai Essential Commodities Act avashyak vastuon ke liye jo banaya gaya tha kehne ke liye इसमें बदलाव होगा लेकिन जैसे एमएसएमई की परिभाषा में बदलाव करके एक बहुत बड़ा बदलाव उस क्षेत्र में आया है उसी तरह से इस बदलाव से किसानों की आय में बढ़ोतरी की बहुत सारी संभावनाएं बढ़ जाती हैं जो कहीं ना कहीं उसको कम दाम पर बेचने के लिए एक तरह से रुकना पड़ता था कई और इसके नुकसान भी होते थे अब उसके लिए भी इसमें अवसर निकल कर आएंगे जिससे आपके दलहन की बात हो दलहन की बात हो प्याज हो आलू हो ऐसे या सीरियल्स की बात हम की जाए इन सब में इनको अवनियमित किया जाएगा डीरेगुलेट किया जाएगा जिससे कि किसानों को लाभ मिल सके और अगर 100 प्रतिशत वृद्धि खुदरा दाम में होती है जो हॉर्टिकल्चर के प्रोड्यूस हैं या 50 प्रतिशत की वृद्धि होती है जो जो गैर नाशवान पदार्थ हैं नॉन पैरिशेबल हैं तो उस समय में कदम उठाए जा सकते हैं ऐसे एक्सेप्शनल सरकमस्टांसिस होते हैं तो उस समय में और जो लोग फूड प्रोसेसिंग में हैं उनके लिए ऐसी कोई स्टॉक लिमिट ना हो जिससे कि उनके कामकाज में भी कोई प्रभाव ना पड़े और वैल्यू चेन में भी कोई उसका नुकसान ना हो और निर्यात करने वालों को भी कहीं पर दिक्कत ना आए वी मूव टू दी सेकेंड लेकिन राष्ट्रीय आपदा और सूखा ऐसी कोई परिस्थितियां आती हैं तो उस समय में सरकार समय समय पर कदम उठा सकती है थैंक यू सॉरी आई मूव टू द नेक्स्ट द सेकेंड ऑफ द थ्री रिफॉर्म्स दिस इज रिलेटेड टू फार्मर्स and farmers getting adequate choice to sell their produce at an attractive price. We shall bring a central law so that farmers will be able to have the choice to sell his produce at an attractive price. He has no barriers in interstate trade. So the interstate trade at the moment is restricted. There sh it should be barrier free. We also want to make sure there is a framework for him for, to have his produce e-traded. He should be able to engage in e-trading of his produce. So a certain amount, at the moment you know that he sells his produce only to licensees, holders of license, and this restriction uh, has been one of the reasons why he is not able to find a fair price. Whilst I'll just give you one comparison, no other producer of any other produce in the manufacturing sector, for instance, is compelled to have to sell to only a certain set of licensees. Why should only farmers be restricted in selling his produce to only some licensees and not be open to sell it to whoever he wants to sell? So we want to give farmers the choice so that he's be, he'll be able to sell his product, uh, products at an attractive price, have no barriers in interstate movement, and make sure that he's able to e-trade. 